Good evening and hello. My name is Renee D. Warren and I am the founder of Uniquely and Wonderfully Made Ministries. Welcome to my new presentation on police and the mentally ill. Law enforcement is a hot topic these days. That is why I interrupted my previous series on anxiety disorders to inform you about this. I will resume my discussion on anxiety disorders at a later date. I would like to welcome you, everyone back who is in my community. And if you are just joining my community, thank you for joining and I welcome you too. I hope that you will find this topic both interesting and informative. On Thursday, August the 13th, there was a live streamed panel discussion held at the House of Representatives Chamber in, of Pennsylvania in Harrisburg. One of the panelists was Corey Kohemer, who is a mental health program specialist coordinator of the crisis intervention team of Franklin County in Fulton, PA. Fulton is located in South Central PA. It is a watershed of the Chesapeake Bay and it is drained by the Potomac River. A crisis intervention team or CIT is a police mental health collaborative. The term CIT is often used to describe both a program and a training in law enforcement to help guide interactions between law enforcement and those living with mental illness. This definition comes from Wikipedia. The following information was given by Corey Kohammer, the health, the mental health person in the organization, which began in 2013. They held 10 40 hour week training sessions for over 180 individuals. The participants were law enforcement, first responders, 9-11 dispatchers, probation officers, correction officers, and some hospital workers. Over half the people were in law enforcement and first responders. CIT is more than just a training, but it is a relationship between law enforcement and mental health community. Police chiefs and sergeants were involved with the development of the program. In 2017, the CIT members were given a two-year grant to pilot the responder co-responder model. As a result, a mental health professional was allowed to work out of three local police departments. Each morning, she made live calls and live runs, made follow-up calls, and follow-up visits. The goal of the mental health professional was to see 85 persons in two years and get 75 of the participants to participate in community-based services. Within four months, they had seen 80 people. Within eight months, they had seen 75. After the two years, 92% of the people did not have any further contact with the police. As a result of the success of this program, they required money to go and get another mental health professional. The CIT responded to calls where a person is exhibiting strange behaviors, where someone is trying to commit suicide, where there is domestic violence situation, and situations with homeless people. Ms. Kohemer described two incidences where the intervention of a mental health professional yielded positive outcomes. The 9-11 dispatcher received a call that a man was picking flowers out of different people's lawns, giving them to women who were passing by, making, making inappropriate suggestions to the women. Over the course of nine days, he had contact with an additional four police departments. He kissed an employee of a fast food restaurant, was picking through the trash, peered in the school window, and stole a wedding cake. A co-responder began working with the individual. 
he was able to get the man an appointment with a psychiatrist, get him a treatment plan, refer him to the Veterans Administration, and get him a caseworker for him who helped the man figure out his health insurance. As a result of the intervention, the gentleman had no further contact with the police. Another 9-1 incident was when a 911 dispatcher received a mental distress call. The co-responder took the call. During the course of the conversation, the co-responder asked the caller if she was feeling suicidal. The lady responded, yes. The co-responder asked her if she had a plan. The co-responder says, yes, I have a loaded revolver in my drawer. The worker was able to talk to the lady into going with the police officer to a crisis treatment center. Officers should not have to navigate mental health situations because they don't have the skills to do so. They should be interacting with criminals. The mental health people should take care of mental health situations because this is their area of expertise. The mental health program lasted for four to five years and they saw 800 people. 91% of them did not have any further contact with law enforcement. After the COVID-19 pandemic is over, the mental health professionals will resume the trainings. Thank you for listening to my presentation today. I trust that you will find it both interesting and informative. My next video will air on the second Friday of next month. Please don't miss it. Ask someone to join our community. They must go on Facebook to search for my page, Renee Waring, W-A-R-R-I-N-G. Press on the picture in the search bar. My profile will appear. Scroll down and you scroll down and they will find a large picture of me in a suit. Tell them to push the black words that read sign up, which is a few inches under my picture. A window will open where they can put their name and email address so they can receive all of my future videos. Remember, the, script, the, script, the subscription is absolutely free. I am the founder of Uniquely and Wonderfully Made Ministries. My name is Renee D. Warren, and I am the Warrior Warren. Thank you.